What's going on this morning, everybody? God bless you all in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Praise ye the name of the Lord, for he is a strong tower and the righteous run into it and they are saved. This morning, <laughs> hallelujah, somebody say, put in the chat, somebody put in the comments, God, I love you. <laughs> God, you are so faithful. God, you are so good. Even when I'm not, even when, even when I'm, I'm all over the place, you're still holding me in place because I am in you. God, even when I don't see a way out, I trust your plan. God, even when I don't know where the miracle is coming or when it's going to come or if it's going to come. Oh, but Lord, I trust you. Hear me, brothers and sisters, sometimes in the church, See, sometimes Christians can be a little funny. Sometimes Christians can make you believe as if well, we got it all together. Well, the reason why God came through is because I'm amazing. Well, the reason why God moved upon my life is because I am the man of God. I'm a man of faith. I'm a woman of I'm a woman of faith. Well, the reason why I the reason why everything is so good and flowing in my life is because it is because I, uh, I, I never doubt and I never waver and I never try to figure out how God's going to move in and upon this situation. Here's what I'll come to say to you, say to you today. You're never going to have everything figured out. You're never going to know how it's going to come. You're never going to know when God's going to move. You are never going to know. You, here's the thing. If you know how it's all going to work out, when it's going to come, how it's going to come, when God's going to move then what do you need God for? See, this is what I'm talking about. Sometimes in the church, God will move even at the time when you don't see a way. Sometimes God will move even, even when you don't believe and your mind is, is, it, your mind is wrestling with you and your mind is talking at you and your mind is saying, is it ever going to come? Your mind is trying to argue with the spirit of truth but yet, even in the midst of your doubt, even in the midst of your unbelief, even in the midst when you don't see a way, even in the times when your own mind is trying to talk you out of that miracle or your own mind doesn't see a way out, the spirit of the Lord begins to hover over you. The spirit of the Lord begins to breathe your way. The spirit of the Lord begins to blow your way. <sighs> See, a lot of times, brothers and sisters, don't let Christians fool you. Don't let church folks fool you. Because sometimes, how is God going to get the goodness if you have it all figured out? How is God going to get the glory if, if, if the reason he moved is because you're so amazing? How is God going to get the glory is the reason why God is moving in your life is because you're a super Christian. Come on, somebody. See, God doesn't just move because you have everything figured out. God doesn't just move because you're a super Christian. God doesn't just move. He will move to the, to the doubting Thomases. Notice when all of the disciples, they got to see Jesus. And Thomas showed up upon the scene. And he says, I won't believe unless I touch. I won't believe unless I see. And watch this. You got to remember that in this moment, Thomas missed his Lord too. You got to remember that in this moment, Thomas walked with him too. And to hear that he missed the moment to see the one that he was so in love with. You got to remember, this is not just Bible stories. This was men that walked with Christ. This was men that, that in this moment were still broken emotionally, missing their friend that they broke with, that they broke bread with on the daily. He said, I won't, I hear you fellas. I, I understand what you're saying, but I won't believe unless I see it myself. I won't believe unless I get to touch him. And guess what? Even in the midst of Thomas's doubt, even in the midst of Thomas's unbelief, what happened? The Lord showed up. Even in the midst of Thomas saying, I hear what you all are saying and I'm not calling you all liars. 
I love you, my brothers, but I miss my Lord. I miss the times of breaking bread together with him. You remember how we used to gather together in the morning time? You remember how we used to walk with him and he would just tell us the stories? You remember how, you know, he would just share his love and you remember seeing all those wonderful miracles? You remember, I miss him. So I hear what you're saying and I get what you're saying and I, and I believe that what you're saying is true, but I won't fully believe it unless I touch. See, sometimes, brothers and sisters, Jesus will show up in your life even when you have no faith to believe that what it is that you're believing for and all of a sudden it manifests. It comes nigh unto your life to reveal his goodness for you because of how much he truly loves you. You mean to tell me you need everything perfect and lined up to the T in order for the spirit of the Lord to move upon you. So it's so so this so God moving in and upon your life is based upon how amazing you are. So God moving in and upon your life is based upon how super Christian you are. So you mean to tell me God's moving in and upon your life is based upon how faithful you got all the I's dotted. You got all the T's crossed. You're this amazing Christian that is walking that fine line, perfect as can be. Well, the reason I'm blessed is because I, I'm amazing. Well, the reason I'm blessed is because I'm a super Christian. Well, the reason I'm blessed is because I got all this wisdom and all this knowledge and all this revelation. Is that so? Because I promise you, before those breakthroughs and before those miracles and before those, that supernatural moment happened in your life, you too was doubting. And a lot of times, sometimes Christians will stand upon a platform and they'll try to boast of themselves and, and, and they'll try to make it sound. Well, the reason why everything and God's goodness was coming my way is because I, I, I so positioned myself. For God to come my way because of how amazing and how much and how much I was in faith. Never telling people the truth, being honest and vulnerable and, and, and truly transparent. You didn't know when God was going to come. You didn't know how he was going to move. You didn't know if it was going to come. And all of a sudden, God's goodness blew your way. You didn't know how the miracle was going to happen. You didn't know when the breakthrough was going to happen. But because of his love for you. He came your way. See, sometimes brothers and sisters, see God moving upon your life is not based upon how amazing you think you are. God moving in and upon your life is not because you have everything figured out. God moving in and upon your life is not because you're a super Christian. God moving in and upon your life is so that he will get the glory. But if Christians keep, if Christians want to keep touching the glory, and they want to keep saying and painting this image and painting this picture. Well, the reason why the blessings are just abundantly flowing in my life is because I'm amazing. It's because I'm a super Christian. It's because, you know, because because I, I walk the tight rope and 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 and, 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 and I position myself and I do everything right accordingly. I'm not saying that we don't live in faith because we live in faith. And we always live in expectancy. But you and I both know there's nothing that you can do that will ever force the hand of God. And a lot of times, some of the miracles that have come your way, you didn't know, you didn't know when it was going to come. Sometimes when those breakthroughs come your way, you didn't know how it was going to happen. Sometimes when that financial thing came your way that lifted that burden off your life. Come on, preachers, let me tell you something. It's time that you start being transparent. It's time that you start being real with people. Because you know, like I know, there's times when a miracle came. And even in the midst when that miracle came, we didn't, we even mentally weren't even in the faith to fully believe that that moment truly transpired and took place and happened. Because if you think it's because of how amazing we, we are, how is Jesus ever going to get the glory? Because sometimes the greatest testimonies, the greatest, the greatest testimonies come when that man or that woman truly couldn't see a way out. Sometimes the greatest mo moments and testimonies come when we didn't know if the miracle was going to happen. But God, 
Sometimes you were about ready to get thrown out. You were on your brink. You were on the brink of bankruptcy. You were on the brink of losing a house. You were on the brink of this and you were on the brink of that. Not knowing how a miracle was going to come. But God. See, God's goodness is not based upon you being the great Christian that a lot of times, sometimes Christians paint this image and make people believe that they are. See, if, if, if the reason why God is moving in your life is because you're so amazing, if the reason why God is moving in your life is because you're a super Christian, then how is Jesus going to get the glory? How is Jesus going to get the glory? Because, because here we are painting a, pinch, a picture and an image that the reason why Jesus is moving upon my life is because of how amazing and, 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 and how tight roped and how super Christian that I am. But never being vulnerable and transparent so that people can still see the raw you because of the truth be told. Before that miracle happened, you were in pain. Before that breakthrough happened, you were broken to the core of your soul. Before that, that financial miracle came, you didn't, know, you didn't see a way out. If God didn't move, you were through. But to paint this image that sometimes Christians want to paint as if everything, they have everything figured out. They, they know exactly what to do. Because if you have it all figured out, and if you know exactly what to do, why do you need God then? Because a lot of times, brothers and sisters, just like Thomas, see, sometimes you got to imagine in this moment, Thomas missed his Lord too. You got to imagine that he was a friend of the disciples. You got to imagine spending, you got to imagine this. Imagine breaking bread with Jesus every day, walking with him every day, seeing his face every, every single day and missing his Messiah, his friend, the one that they commune with, commune with on the daily and he, and he now no longer in the physical is there. Though he's, though he's here, no doubt. But you got to put yourself in the, in the shoes of Thomas in this moment. I hear you all, brothers. I love you all, my brothers. And I'm not saying you're lying, my brothers. But I won't believe unless I see, unless I touch and put my finger in his side. And guess what? Guess who Jesus came walking through the wall for to reveal himself to? We call him Doubting Thomas. But is he really Doubting Thomas? Or, 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 or was he really just a friend of Jesus that wanted to see and believe what he was hear, hearing them talk about could become real to him too so that he could touch and see what they saw to give evidence an assurance to him being fully alive and well. So I wanted, I wanted to turn this video on today to remind a lot of you today, if you think you got to be perfect for God to move, take that thought captive. If you think you, you're going to, if you think you're going to have it all figured out, take that thought captive. If you, if you think you, you can, if you think there's a formula to breakthrough, take that thought captive. If you think you're going to touch the glory and the reason why God's going to move upon your life is because you're amazing, take that thought captive and, and repent for idolatry, for trying to touch the Lord's glory. Take those thoughts captive because of the truth be told like you and me, we stand trusting the Lord no matter what. Because of the truth be told, you know, like I know, we don't know when it's going to come. If you, you know, like I know, we don't know how it's going to happen. 
you know like I know. Sometimes the Lord will take you to that breaking point. Sometimes the Lord will take you to, to, to the edge of a thing. Sometimes the Lord won't show up until the very last moment. Now, why he does that, I don't know. I don't like it. I know you don't like it neither. I don't like it when the Lord does that. But you know like I know. You know like I know. He may not come when you want him. But he is always on time. And a lot of times, sometimes, when we expect or we perceive how we perceive that God is only going to move in a certain type of way. He will flip the script on you because he don't want you in a formula. He wants you in faith. See, a lot of times you're going to be looking for things and a miracle in the way that you want it. And God will flip the script on you and bring it to you in a way that you would have never imagined. Don't limit the Lord, y'all. Don't limit the Lord. So I wanted to say to you today, today, and somebody needs, hey, what's going on, my brother Brian? Love you, brother. God bless you, Tina. Hear me, brother. Hear me, brothers and sisters. The reason why I turned the camera on this morning is this. is because some of you all are waiting for a miracle. Some of you all are waiting for a breakthrough. And let me tell you something. I've been serving the Lord since 1998. We all have gone through some battles. We all were expecting God to move in and upon situations. And like I said, I've been there. I've been there many times when I didn't know how it was going to come. I didn't know if a breakthrough was ever going to happen. I didn't know if God was going to. I didn't know how and when and through whom and from which direction God was going to move. I didn't know. Even in the moments and the times when doubt was knocking at my door and the enemy speaking in my ear and my own carnal thoughts speaking to me, saying to me, will it ever come? And my response to that thought is you best believe it's gonna. You just keep loving Jesus. You keep focused in it upon the prize of the high calling in the Lord. You keep walking it out. And I promise you, brothers and sisters, when that miracle happens, it wasn't because of how amazing you are. When that breakthrough comes, it wasn't because of how, how tight line and tight roped uh, uh, of, of a faith walk that you're walking. No, it was simply because he loves you. It was simply because he wants to reveal his goodness through you so that in it and through it, the only one that gets the glory is Jesus Christ. What if sometimes the greatest hindrance and the blocking of God's moving uh, miracle working power or God manifesting what it is we've been praying and believing for is because we're trying to work God through a formula and we're trying to work God through, through, through a story in the Bible to correlate and make it relate to you and me. Not understanding and realizing that we are in a different time and a moment and, and the same faith. You, you want to tell me that Moses, when he was standing at the Red Sea, looking at a body of water, and behind him was millions of people and the enemy coming his way. You mean to tell me Moses was calm, cool, and collective? You mean to tell me that Moses in this moment, he needed the reliance in and upon God Almighty. And what did the Lord say to him? What's in your hand? What is in your hand? I want for you to stretch it forth. What's in your hand today, brothers and sisters? What is it that you think that, that, that wouldn't be what you would need to be obedient to what God says, point it and stretch it forth upon those waters and watch and see how I will split this situation and watch and see that you're going to walk over, not on muddy ground, you're going to walk over on dry ground. Now imagine this supernaturally. God parts the waters. The, the ground is dry, not muddy. The whole thing is supernatural in and of itself. But you mean to tell me that the mindset of Moses in this moment 
he was calm, cool, and collective. Oh, God is going to move because I'm the man of God. God is going to move because I'm a super Christian. God is going to move because, because I'm doing everything right according to, to everything and how it is of my, per, of, of my perfection, of my faith. And because God's got to see, I am the, I am the super Christian. You mean to tell me that God is not concerned with you too? See, because your Red Sea moment, it might not be a body of water, but the enemy is on our back. The enemy is on our back. And what did the Bible say? That the enemy in which you see today, you're going to see no more. See, there's a devil that, is, that there is an enemy that is after you and hopes to try to stop you and to rob you and, and, and hopes to hinder you from getting to where God and what it is God is calling you to do. See, a lot of times people think that the breakthrough and the miracle is primarily for themselves, not understanding. It's for a purpose and a cause to bring Jesus Christ glory. And what and what did they do at Gilgal? What did they set up at Gilgal? They set up at Gilgal memorials. Why did they put memorials at Gilgal? To remind the people and a generation that did not see the supernatural and the miraculous of how God moved to tell the story. This is what the Lord did. I love you on the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. See, some of you all, you all need to put up the memorials at your Gilgal. Put up, your, put up your memorials at Gilgal so that you remind yourself, I remember, I remember 10 years ago, I was believing God for this. I remember five years ago, I needed a breakthrough financially. I remember I needed a miracle in this. I remember I needed God to move upon this. I remember, I remember we needed God to move so badly that if he didn't move, we were going to go under. You remind yourself. You place up those memorials. What is your Gilgal today? What is your Gilgal today? You set up those memorials to remind yourself of God's faithfulness in and upon your life. You remind yourself when God moved upon that moment, that situation, the timing of the Lord, even in the midst of your doubt, even when you didn't see a way out, even when you didn't know how the miracle was going to come. Come on. And sometimes... Sometimes preachers do a disservice to the people, making the people believe and think as if they had it all figured out. And the reason why God moved is because is because they were in super faith. They were in super faith mode. But the truth be told, you know, like I know, sometimes sometimes there was moments when we didn't know how it was going to come. Sometimes there's moments in our life. When, it, when we didn't know when it was going to come. Sometimes there was moments in our life we didn't see a way out. Sometimes there was moments in our life if it didn't turn around, we were going to go under. See, the goodness of God is not based upon you. The goodness of God is based upon Him. Because at the end of the day, it's not your, it's not your name that is upon the line. What is on the line is the name of Jesus Christ and Him getting glory. But if we want to touch the glory... And if we want to, we if we want to always be forcing and and, and 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 trying to make the hand of God fit our narrative, so that people believe and think, come on, man, well, God did it for them because they're so and so. God did it for them because they're a preacher, or God did it for them because they got super faith more than me. Did Jesus show up for Thomas or didn't he? Did Jesus show up for Thomas or didn't he? Not only did Jesus show up for Thomas, he didn't even use the door. <laughs> See, Jesus don't need a door because he is the door. See, he's the door that you need to open in and upon your life. But I want to encourage you today, brothers and sisters. There's going to come times and moments in your life when you're not going to see a way out. There's going to come times and moments in your life when you're not going to when you're not going to know exactly where the miracle, where the breakthrough, when when the timing of the Lord is going to come nigh in and upon your life. 
Here's what I need for you to do is this. You keep loving. You keep praising. You keep worshiping. You keep being faithful. Even when the storms and the winds and, and, and all hell is coming against you and the enemy is in your ear trying to doubt, trying to talk you out of what God through his word by the Holy Spirit to confirm what it is that by his spirit that only he can make a way to do and to bring in it upon your life because you know like I know don't be painting this image that you're this perfect saint don't be painting this image that that the that, that, that you're this perfect preacher as if to be lying to the people to tell the people you remember before that miracle happened you remember how much pain you were in you remember that that even in your mind you remember that even in your soul you didn't know how you didn't know how god was gonna or when god was gonna or whether or not it was even gonna come but god that's my word for you today in jesus name don't ever think for one minute god god has forgotten about you and don't for, and don't ever for one minute think that that, that 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 your unbelief or your perfection or you being a super saint is what moves the hand of jesus as a matter of fact how will you know of god's goodness how will you how will you taste and see truly how good and faithful he truly is in moments when you didn't see a way out but he came through how will you truly ah uh, have tears of joy a worship and a praise that is like no other and people will look at that worship and praise and say why he's got it why does he or why does she gotta go out go all out like god why does he or she have to go out go all out with god like that never understanding that they are a miracle never understanding god just came through never understanding that even in the midst of our doubt that even in the midst of not understanding or knowing when and how or through whom or when god was going to move but he did and he will and it's not because you're good it's because he's good what i need for you to do is this you need to calm the storms that are raging in your soul you need to take those thoughts captive that are trying to get you to doubt our god you need to quiet the voices that are trying to override his because no matter what it is and where it is you are in this moment whether he comes or whether he doesn't whether he moves or whether he doesn't whether you whether you succeed or fail he's still faithful you're going to worship him you're going to give him glory as if the miracle is nigh see it's okay to not know it's okay to sometimes have these thoughts racing in your mind and in your heart. God, how is this going to change? God, where are you in this moment? God, if you don't move, see, don't let these preachers these super saints make you believe and get you thinking that they have it all figured out. If they have it all figured out, then they're not in faith because sometimes faith is the unknown. See, faith is in the deep waters. See, sometimes faith is in the word that says, go, go to the other side, fellas. <laughs> but by the way, as you go, my word over your life is going to produce a storm because the enemy don't want you to get there. But I don't want your eyes focused in and upon the storm. I want your heart 
and your mindset fixed upon my word that told you to go. Because if I told you to go, my word is going to get you there. If I told you to go, you're going to get there. If I told you to go to the other side, there is no devil in hell that is going to stop you. If I told you to go, yes, the enemy hears. Yes, but you're going to get there. I love you all. Be blessed in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. There's many of you that are going to tune into this video. And some of you are even watching. You haven't even clicked in. Because you know how people hiding in the shadows. Hiding in the bushes. <laughs> they don't want to click on the video. Because they don't want for you to see that they tuned in. And that's alright. That's alright. They're still not free. Come on somebody. I know, I know you don't like it. But I'm just telling you. You need to get delivered from yourself. You need to get delivered from, 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 well, I don't want to tune into that brother's video because I don't want others to see that I agree. <laughs> Some of y'all need to get free from you. You need to get free from your image. That's it. This is exactly what I'm talking about. Come on, man. It's exactly what I'm talking about. See, some preachers, they're not free. You want to know why they're not free? Whenever a preacher can't celebrate his brothers and sisters, for what they're doing for the glory of God in Christ Jesus, they're still in bondage. They're still bound to the image and, to the image and people. Come on, King Saul. Put down that sword and let's give Jesus Christ the glory. I love you all. Be blessed and be encouraged in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I know, I know, I know how people do, y'all. It's it, See, one of the craziest things in Christianity, one of the most insecure mentality and mindsets of believers in the body of Christ is when brothers and sisters can't celebrate one another. I love you all. <laughs> I don't want to, I can't tune in because I don't want to be guilty by association. I didn't say tune into foolishness, but I said, but, but I will say this. Tune into those that you know God is God's hand is upon, who God is working with, who God is working through, and celebrate Jesus Christ and his glory moving in and upon their life. Come on, man. Y'all need to start celebrating your brothers and sisters. Y'all need to tell them, you know what? Thank you for your service. Thank you for never giving up. You keep preaching. I may not agree with you 100 I know your doctrine may be different than mine. But I love you as a brother and I love you as a sister. I want to see you succeed. I want to see you win. Keep going. Keep preaching. And keep loving God's people. Feed the sheep. I love you all. Be blessed. Come on, man. We got to start celebrating one another. See, the fact that, watch this. The fact that leaders in Christianity... Don't celebrate one another reveals they're, they're fully not 100% free. They're still in bondage. They're in bondage to man, not the devil, but they're in bondage and enslaved to man of what it is that other people will perceive if they were to see them celebrating you. Come on, man. This is not about you and me. This is about Jesus Christ and him getting the glory. So I'll end with this. You don't know when that miracle is going to come. Y'all. I don't talk about many testimonies, but let me tell you. I've heard some amazing. I know of some amazing. I've experienced some amazing testimonies of, of how God showed up right on time. Financially. Physically. A miracle, a healing, a restoration, a breakthrough, a door open, a phone call come in. $10,000 show up. $20,000 show up. Out of nowhere.
God told me to bless you, man of God. God told me to bless you, woman of God. People that don't even go to your church. People that you never even see on social media who do not have a name. But God put them on, but God put them, put you on their heart. You mean to tell me God doesn't give people dreams of a person to help meet a need? In, the, in their life. You need to get your faith up. Because if you don't think God isn't doing it. He is. And like I said. You don't know when that miracle is going to come. You don't know how it's going to happen. And sometimes. You will come to that breaking point. Where you will almost tap out. Solically emotionally, physically drained and the thoughts in your mind running rampant and loose trying to figure out. But whether God shows up or not, he's still faithful. But I promise you, in a moment's time, even in the midst of your doubt, even in the midst of your unbelief, even in the midst of sometimes not even Almost trying, almost giving up. But God, you don't believe me? You've not walked with them long enough to know. And you don't think God is not putting things upon the hearts of other people that can't help? That God will send your way? You need to get your faith up. Brothers and sisters, just because that number financially is big in your mind, it ain't nothing to the Lord. It ain't nothing to the Lord. Why are you limiting God? Y'all be blessed. Have a beautiful and amazing day. In Jesus' name.